Welcome back, Deep Divers. Today we're going to get into something that just blew my mind. We're talking honeybees, but not just their usual hive business. Right. We're diving deep into some fascinating research about how these little pollinators experience fear and how it can mess with their brains, you know, their behavior. Like, did you know that just the threat of a predator can totally throw them off their game? It can affect their ability to learn and even their sense of smell crazy right yeah it's really amazing how even a creature as well seemingly simple as a bee has these super complex responses to fear totally i mean we tend to think of fear as this like purely emotional thing right but with bees it kicks off all these like physiological and cognitive changes really changes their whole system so let's break it down a little researchers actually watched these fear-like behaviors in honeybees when they were put uh near hornets i mean can you imagine who wouldn't be freaked out by a giant hornet for sure. But here's the thing. The hornets were tied up, so they couldn't actually sting the bees. Yeah. The researchers came up with this really clever experiment oh, wow. to kind of like isolate the effects of the fear itself. I see. They built this special arena. It was see-through, cone-shaped, where they could track how the bees moved, all using these high-speed cameras. Oh, that's cool. And the bees' reactions, oh, well, let's just say they were pretty revealing. Okay, so what did these scared little bees do? Did they just like freeze up? Or did they try to fight back? It was a mix of reactions. Actually, all pretty typical fear behavior. Like, they definitely stayed further away from the hornet. Yep. Makes sense, right? Get as far from the threat as possible. Right. But they also started moving way faster, trying to escape, and they even huddled together. Oh, like a bee version of safety in numbers. Exactly. It seems like these tiny creatures have figured out some pretty sophisticated ways to handle danger, kind of like a lot of other animals, you know, even us. And... This is just the beginning. What's even more fascinating is what's going on in their brains when they're scared, particularly with this neurotransmitter called dopamine. Dopamine. Wait, isn't that the one we usually associate with feeling good, like pleasure and reward? I'm curious how that ties into being afraid. Yeah, that's where it gets really interesting. See, the scientists found that after being around the hornets for a while, the bees' dopamine levels actually went down. So it seems like being afraid can dampen their dopamine system, which might seem kind of backwards at first. So instead of feeling good, they experience this like dopamine dip when they're scared. Yeah. That's wild. But what does that actually mean for the bees? Does it affect how they act like beyond the initial freak out of seeing the hornet? It does actually. It affects both how well they can learn and their senses, especially their sense of smell, which is well crucial for a bee. And that's where things get even more interesting. We start to see how far reaching the effects of fear can be. So to figure out like how much the sphere was impacting them, the researchers use this cool technique called the proboscis extension reflex, or a PER. PER, okay. It basically tests how well bees learn to connect a specific smell with getting a reward. So like a bee version of, uh, you know, Pavlov's dogs. Exactly. Instead of a bell making them drool, a certain smell makes them like stick out their tongues for a treat. You got it. So they trained these bees to link a floral scent with a sugary reward. Okay. And normally bees are like pros at this. Right. But the ones that had been hanging out with those um, hornets, they were way slower to learn. So being scared was actually making them worse at learning. That's so weird. But wait, how did they even test their sense of smell? Did they give them like tiny sniff tests or something? Not quite, haha. They used something called uh, electroantinography. Electro what now? Basically, it measures the electrical signals from the bee's antenna when they smell different things. Gotcha. It's like a way to see how sensitive their sense of smell is. Interesting. And what did they find? Were the scared bee's antenna, like, super sensitive on high alert because of the hornet? It was actually the opposite. They were less sensitive to a bunch of smells, even the smell of a live hornet. Wow. So not only are they having trouble learning, they're also less able to smell the danger itself. That's uh, not a good combo. But is there any hope for these freaked out bees? Can they, like, snap out of it? That's the really cool part. The researchers wanted to see if they could reverse these effects. Okay. And this is where dopamine comes back in. Right. We were talking about how, like, the bees' dopamine levels dropped after being around the hornets. Exactly. So they tried boosting their dopamine levels artificially. Oh, interesting. How'd they do that? They fed them a sugar solution mixed with L-dopia, it's a substance that's actually used to treat Parkinson's disease in humans, which is also linked to low dopamine. So they gave the bees a little dopamine boost. Did it work? The results were amazing. The bees that got the l were suddenly way better at smelling and learning again. 
Wow. So just by changing their dopamine levels, they were able to basically undo the damage from the fear. Pretty much. Yeah. Does that mean there's like a direct connection between dopamine, fear, and uh, how well our brains work? It definitely suggests that. And it opens up all of these cool questions about how fear affects the brain, not just in bees, but in other animals too, even us. Right. Like if we can fix the problems that fear causes in bees just by giving them more dopamine, what could that mean for things like anxiety and, um, you know, fear-related disorders in people? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Could this lead to new treatments for, like, anxiety or even PTSD? It really mm -hmm. makes you think, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, what's actually happening inside those tiny bee brains when they're, like, facing a threat? Right. It's amazing. It's wild. We've always kind of underestimated what animals can, you know, think and feel. Yeah. And studies like this, I think they're just scratching the surface. We're getting mm -hmm. a glimpse into this whole other side of them. It's like a whole other dimension, right? Exactly. And it shows how connected we all are, you know. Yeah. If a bee can be afraid and have its brain chemistry all messed up by it. Yeah. Well, it makes sense that other animals, even ones we think of as super smart like dogs or dolphins, are experiencing similar stuff. Right. Maybe even on a like deeper level. Exactly. It's kind of a mind-blowing thought. It is. So for all of us listening, what's the big takeaway here? Why should we even care about like the fear and dopamine levels of a bee? I mean, it's super cool from a science perspective, but what does it mean for us? Well, I think beyond just the like coolness of science, it reminds us that fear is powerful stuff. Yeah. It affects even the tiniest creatures. And it's not just a feeling, yeah. right? No, no. It's this whole biological process with real consequences. Exactly. Like, remember how the fear messed with their learning and foraging? Uh -huh. Well, that could affect their whole colony. Like the domino effect. Yeah. Fear, it can spread and change entire communities. Like exactly. Even beyond just the one individual who's feeling it. Right. But this research also gives us this peek into how the brain works, like the whole system. All the moving parts. Yeah the interplay of these chemicals like dopamine. And the fact that we can actually tweak those chemicals <laughs> and maybe undo the damage from fear. That's pretty amazing. It is. It gives us a whole new way of thinking about like fear-related disorders. For sure. Not just in bees, but maybe in people too. Yeah, anxiety, PTSD, you name it. It gives us hope that we can help people cope with those challenges. Absolutely. That's a game changer. It is. And that's what's so cool about science, right? Right. It's not just about understanding the world. Yeah. It's about using that knowledge to make things better. Totally. Well said. This has been an incredible deep dive. It has. I hope our listeners are like buzzing with new ideas now. Me too. <laughs> if you want to learn more, definitely look up the original research. You know, dive into this whole world of bee smarts. Absolutely. It's fascinating stuff. It is. And next time you see a bee, just remember there's so much more going on inside than we realize. Right. That little fuzzy exterior is hiding a whole universe of complexity. So true. Until next time, deep divers, keep exploring.